In this video, we will learn about how to treat the problem of multicollinearity using the software R. In our previous videos, we've seen that the various inflation factor or the VIF is taken as one of those measures that indicates the presence of multicollinearity. And as a convention, a VIF value greater than 5 is taken to indicate the presence of multicollinearity. Now, we take a small example of a data set with the name Alvi, which belongs to the R package called DMWR, and I'll shortly show you how to do it on the software itself. So this data set basically is for the purpose of predicting the frequency of occurrence of algae and the explanatory variables for this data set are the presence of various chemicals like manganese, chlorine and so on. And the purpose is to draw a linear regression between the explanatory variables and the dependent variables and to predict the occurrence of algae. If I run a linear regression between the dependent variable A1 and all of the explanatory variables, I find the VIF, the variance inflation factor for the result. Suppose the output which I get is something like this. Here, the GVIF denotes all the VIF numbers for the explanatory variables. As we've already seen that a VIF value greater than 5 is indicative of multicollinearity. Therefore, in this case, we see OPO4 and PO4 are these two explanatory variables that are infected with multicollinearity because their VIF values are greater than 5. Therefore, we need to take some corrective measures for it. Let us come to another example. Suppose in a model, I have 15 explanatory variables from X1 to X15. I run a linear regression on them and then find out the variance inflation factor measures for each of these explanatory variables. Now, the step-by-step -step iterative method to correct the problem of multicollinearity is to eliminate that variable with the highest value of the VIF. Then, with the remaining variables, draw a linear regression once again, find the variable with the highest value of the VIF, drop it from the model and repeat the process again till all the VIF values are less than 5. In this case, here we had X8 with the highest value of VIF equal to 183. We started with 15 variables where X8 had the highest value of the VIF. So we drop it from our analysis and then we are left with 14 variables. We draw a linear regression among these 14 variables with the dependent variable and then we find the VIF for the revised case. In this time, we find that the highest value of the VIF lies with the variable X10. In this case, it was 57.26. Therefore, what the next idea is to drop X10 from this list of all the explanatory variables and run the regression again with the remaining 13 variables and the dependent variable. So, after dropping X10 from my analysis, I have 13 variables left and after running the regression once again, I am left with these values of the VIF. Here I see that the variable with the highest value of the VIF is X6 with 9.78 as its VIF. So I drop X6 from my analysis and then I am left with 12 variables. With these 12 explanatory variables and the dependent variable, I draw a linear regression once again and come to the current state where there are 13 uh, where there are 12 variables, 12 explanatory variables, and the highest value of the VIF is with X14, that is with a VIF of 9.3. So now I eliminate X14 from my analysis, and then I'm left with 11 explanatory variables. It so happens that after removing X14 from my database, I have 11 variables left and when I draw a linear regression between these 11 explanatory variables and the dependent variable, all the VIF values come out to be less than 5. That means the optimum model should have the following explanatory variables X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, X7, X9, X11, 12, 13 and 15. We have iteratively removed the variables X6, X10, X14, and X9.
here this procedure is known as a step by step variable selection that leads to the elimination of multicollinearity and helps in the fitting of the optimum number of explanatory variables now let's come back to r where we are going to run these codes and see how it happens in r so the package in r which does so is the dmwr for which i am going to call the library so i write library dmwr and i invoke the data set with the name algae which i do it as follows data of algae now just for the purpose of simplicity i'm going to reduce this database because this database is too huge for to be handled for the sake of simplicity i take a subset of this database and run the regression on it so this is how i do it i take the following explanatory variables mx ph then i have mno2 i have cl there is no3 there is nh4 there is o p o 4 there is p o 4 c h l a and the dependent variable is a 1 so please note that m x p h m n o 2 and so on up till c h l a are all of my explanatory variables and a 1 is the dependent variable so i strike a linear regression among all these variables let the variable name which captures the linear regression be lm.a1 is written as lm a1 on all the explanatory variables denoted by a dot and data is equal to d for the above data set the linear regression is run so i write now in order to find out the vif a special library known as the car has to be invoked it, the VIF function will run only if the car is installed. So now I can write VIF lm.a1 and I am able to see the VIF factors for all the explanatory variables in my model. Here if you notice OPO4 and PO4 are those two variables for which the VIF factors are more than 5. Therefore I drop the one with the highest value of the VIF. In our case, it is PO4. So the next time I run the regression, I will drop PO4 from my analysis. So how do I do that? Say lm.a2 is what is being captured. I write it as lm regressing a1 on all the variables other than PO4. So my variables are mx ph plus mno2 plus cl plus no3 plus n nh4 plus opo4 plus chla please notice that po4 has been dropped from the analysis so comma data is equal to d i write vif of lm dot a2 and see that all the VIF numbers are less than 5. That means after removing PO4, the resulting number of explanatory variables do not have the problem of multicollinearity against them. Thus, the most optimal model which I can fit to this kind of data is with these explanatory variables MXPH, MNO2, CL, NO3, NH4, OPO4 and CHLA. Thus, the problem of multicollinearity has been adjusted for taken into account and then removed had supposed that any of these variables still had a vif number greater than 5 then again using the same procedure discussed above we would have dropped that value we would have dropped that particular explanatory variable run the linear regression again and then taken the vif values this process continues till we reach a state where all the vif numbers are less than equal to 5 so that is how multicollinearity is taken into consideration in R and corrected for. Thank you.